Okay, so one of the highlights of the School of Architecture is the whole design studio and staying in studio, working with your colleagues and working with your comrades all night. And that is one of the biggest highlights of the design studio. In today's video, we're going to be talking about why people don't actually, don't actually get the score they intend on getting. This video will actually be helpful for people new to architecture or people that just entered architecture school and they are experiencing design for the first time so before we move any further if this is your first time here please hit the like button subscribe to our channel for more content like this also hit the notification bell to get notified once we release new videos and that's it and done we are going to jump right into the video i'm going to be highlighting what i feel in my own opinion are the reasons why people don't actually get their desired score especially in their first or second designs in architecture school first reason number one they don't follow a design process or rather they don't have a design process okay what is design process first of all design process is actually the ability of a designer to actually plan his design in such a way he plan it into strategic steps and take documentations all the way i just spoke a little grammar here but let me explain what i mean so as a, an architect if you have a design what you are required to do is to make your base or do your base homework what i mean by do your base homework is collect information pertaining to the design you are given so a lot of times in architecture school students often especially in their first design when they don't understand it they will just be like oh um, they will want to start drafting floor plans immediately and start doing design and uh, which is actually wrong because the whole concept of this research study is not as if that research research is just let them see that okay you have done research or that okay you have done research we take it the the reason for that research is actually to give you enough information for you to reflect in your design and for you to solve problems better in the design and one of the personal stuff i've noticed is that if people don't actually do their design process well and they don't actually document it well they will let her do the design process in a non-proper way. What do I mean? We actually made this mistake. I mean, I'm not excluding myself. I made the same mistake. I didn't have a design process. When we start design, you, you see me just copying shit or I'll call one of my friends and say, guy, if you have finished that shit, I'm next after it. I'll just copy it and trace it. I'll use light and tracing paper to trace it out. So the thing I noticed was in the end, when, you now, when I now started designing the main floor plan or the main site plan or whatever, you see me asking questions questions like what is the standard size for this thing or what is the standard size for a vote what is the standard size so you see that i'm actually doing the design research or the research findings in another way but i'm not doing it in the appropriate way and it will cost me scores while the jurians are actually looking at my design because I did not document enough the research i got the question asking i did was not enough and it wasn't even documented so it will actually affect my overall grade so the advice i'll be giving especially to newbies in the architecture school is do a proper design process do your homework very well do your research go to the sites they are giving get information around the site or surrounding the site do case studies get a, a good case studies that will actually reflect the problem you want to solve in the design you are giving do the research on the measurement on the tools or facilities or the spaces that will be inside that project and i think that will give you it or will give you an edge while your juniors are joining you number two reason students actually meet the wrong mentors or they don't meet the mentor at all okay let me start here in school i'll actually continue by telling a story in school, why we when we started design, of course, we actually had senior colleagues, guys in third year and guys in final year, and even sometimes guys doing their master's program. So we always gonna be meeting them to ask them questions on how we can go about our design, how we can draft sections, the techniques in rendering and graphics and all that. Okay, so one of the things we are doing is it's actually not bad to meet a senior colleague for advice. It's actually a good thing. But there is now it now becomes an issue when people now start prioritizing the senior colleagues advice or recommendations over your mentor i don't know for other architecture schools but i think in most architecture schools once they give students a design brief they'll actually assign a lecturer or a professor to you that is a mentor to you that you'll be meeting time to time to show your progress of that design so 
when people actually don't meet their mentors or even meet them but later go and meet maybe a senior colleague or even a classmate as well you can be a classmate and now be prioritizing the advice over the lecturer's advice sometimes it can give issues i'm not saying that the senior colleagues are always wrong they might be also correct but it's in in a case when the senior colleagues views are kind of conflicting with your mentor's view i think it would be better to actually follow your mentor's view because on in for instance in our school that time on the jury day most times your mentor will actually be in your group and be part of the people during you so if your mentor now comes and see a problem that he talked about and said this was an issue and i told you to go and resolve it and you didn't resolve it maybe because of maybe the senior colleague told you do it this way do it this way so it will actually give you an issue because let's be, tell ourselves the truth the senior colleague is not part of the people during you so it's better you actually follow your mentor's words over anything i'm not saying your mentor is a god or everything your mentor says is correct i'm just saying you should prioritize your mentor's advice because he's the person the school assigned to you and he's also in a better position because he should be more experienced than you as far as architecture is concerned number three we don't put enough effort okay i'm not trying to shade anybody and i'm not saying everybody anybody is perfect but here's what i mean in architecture architecture is actually an amazing profession and it's actually enjoyable once you reach the top the top of the food chain let me just put it that way but the thing is that to reach there you actually go through some trials and tribulations even while you're in school and even after school actually after school at the early stage it even gets worse let's be honest but the thing is if you are in school i always advise before someone even picks architecture the person should have a drive like to actually have a passion for the architecture i know i'm sounding like some motivational speakers that prioritize pa um, passion over anything but here is why i'm saying it architecture is for a layman a layman that, is, that have not been exposed to the whole training and stuff it's actually very tough and at some point it's only your will and your passion that will be carrying you through the stress if you don't have passion i've seen guys when i was in school those days guys will actually enter architecture and at some point they will just drop out because of, number one they did not really have that zeal to it they just did it that oh i'm doing architecture whatever let's go so they just dropped out so aside from the passion part i also encourage you if you don't have passion it's not over you can develop passion for something i would say that your passion let me give you a passion now your passion or your drive should be try and even though you didn't do a course that you actually wanted to do you should always look life look at life with this approach try and maximize the best out of any situation you're in so if you didn't get the course you desired and maybe you are here in architecture i would suggest that you should try and put in your mind like put in your mind since you are here already okay put in your mind and try and maximize what you have at, at hand try and put in your best come to classes do your assignments go to studio look at what your colleagues are doing because sometimes it's not as if it's competition but i also believe that it's always good to look at people's work so you'll be like okay these guys are at higher standards or let me look for why i can reference one or two from there because let's be honest in architecture we actually do amazing designs from references whether we admit it or not so look at stuff put in efforts like hold your drive because of the truth is that in life you actually at some point need to suffer for some things and if you are doing architecture architecture is actually one of them you actually need to put in a lot of effort and i also advise you and encourage you to put in your best effort and try and be the best you can be number four reason people don't take corrections okay this one is quite spicy sure i'll actually be taking shots at some people indirectly but anyhow some people don't actually they don't actually have the ability or no as if they don't have the ability they just don't have the discipline to be able to take corrections see the thing about correction is that the reason why a correction is a correction is because you felt that you genuinely felt that what you did was the right way to do it so you accepting a correction means ignoring your your attachment to your decision prior and saying that okay this person's decision is better than my own let me just accept it whether i feel like it or not and sometimes it's a difficult thing to do but uh, if someone you should always look at corrections like this you should always look at some factors why i think taking corrections you should also look at it like this this person that is giving you correction is has seen some things or has experienced some things that's why he's giving you these corrections and you listen to the person it's not as if i'm saying that every correction you should take it you should you have a brain you should also reason you're a human being 
you should also reason and say okay this thing is like this this is like this okay will i take this like this okay yeah but as well as you should also be kind of humble in a way humble meaning you should be able to drop your prior attachments and decisions if you see this person is in a better place of experience and he actually shows you and explains to you a reason why your decision was wrong and given sometimes we even prove it to you by telling you i did this and this that then this stuff is wrong so people should be able to take corrections especially from their lecturers even though sometimes your correct their corrections might not be correct because they are human beings too but you should also be humble enough to just say okay i have heard you sir and you will now go later and actually reason the corrections and actually see okay here is what and what i can adapt from this correction that this person has given me and the final reason is going to be must you get an a in design okay this reason is actually very um, not very furnished but it's actually quite contradictory that to this whole video like yes i said it must you get an a in design the reason I'm saying it is that some people have attached their whole persona and their whole existence to getting A in uh, or getting good grades in school. I'm not saying good grades in schools are bad or anything. I'm just saying that your priority should not be getting good grades in school. But of course, your priority should be working hard. And eventually, if you work hard, you eventually get good grades in school. That is how it works. But your priority should be, I want to improve as an architect. I want to get gain architecture skill. I want my design to be better than last time and to be better and to keep improving. So that should be your goal. Your goal should not be getting A because in the end, if you are the reason why they are training you in school is not to be getting A's. A cannot buy you, cannot rent an apartment for you. A cannot buy a ride for you. What A does is to actually show that okay, this guy is skilled enough to this certain extent. So what our advice is that I'm not saying that you should not get A and you shouldn't get good grades. I always advise your priority should be getting better and improving and getting and giving you your best and trying to improve as an architect. Because in the end, as I said earlier, A will not give you and it's uh, okay it will give you stuff but it will not actually pay your bills and stuff because in school they are training you to be an architect so you have enough skill to be able to solve problems in the outside world i think that is all my reasons for today if you don't agree with me you can drop your comments why you don't agree with me in the comment section if you agree you can also drop your takes on what you want to add and why students don't actually get their desired score in design at the end of this I will encourage you to give your best in architecture school and always, even if it's not in architecture, give your best in whatever sphere of life you are in and I wish you good luck and I wish you the best. Please like and subscribe if the video was helpful. Also hit the notification bell to get notified once we release new videos. Thank you and have a nice day.